Hello and welcome into the Roadwire Esports Show. I'm Andrew Laird, joined as always by Ethan Sexton. This time to talk about Monday's two-game LPL slate. Ethan, I was just saying to you uh, that for some reason I thought a Jackie Love captain won the Sunday slate. It ended up being Bang captain, but Jackie Love was on it. There, the last like I before I had seen the Bang, I, I was pretty sure Jackie Love uh, had won it, and I was thinking to myself that for how many like ridiculous lineups we've seen win. There was just something comforting about seeing a Jackie Love captain win. It makes me just think, uh, you know, the uh, earth is back on its axis. Uh, and that, of course, it didn't even, didn't even matter because it's not. But it was at least like a, uh, I think it was actually 3-3-1, three, three, the good old uh, rare Adam one-off that uh, we all yep. love to play so much. But um, I don't know. It felt t- Today felt like a normal outcome, even though we, we obviously had like a big upset with... Um, Africa beating T1 in, in a sweep. But even that, like, those can feel normal. So I feel better now because there's some, like, normalcy after. I feel like we're, like, trying to predict just chaos because people think these are the worst advice videos they've ever seen. Did we get another comment? This no. <laughs> no. Oh, all right. All right. We, no. we already talked back to that guy yesterday, so we'll give him a break. Um, <laughs> yeah, today was a little... A little more straightforward in some sense, but, you know, the Afrika sweep was pretty weird. And, of course, you know, our favorite underdog in KT got swept as well. But, you know, we saw four sweeps. Um, just, yeah, just another another day. I mean, it seems like LCK is uh, the place to go for these upsets right now. And uh, LPL, surprisingly, which, you know, used to be good for a lot of upsets. We're still getting some, don't get me wrong. But it seems like the top teams in the LPL are – are really above a lot of the other teams. Uh, So things are sort of rounding into place, but wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some more shocking things going forward, of course. Uh, I will say that I was a little surprised, not that I expected uh, JDG to like, to win or, but like a a, a total sweep. It was like utter domination by top um, that I I was not expecting. I, I'll be honest, there, there was a sense of relief when I saw that Rare Adam just absolutely destroyed Rogue Warriors, because I was like, if this was going to be a Rogue Warrior slate, I didn't have any of them. And I'm like, every, I'm going to have such FOMO every time that they possibly win. Although they look awful, like awful, awful. Yeah, they're they're looking like for sure one of the worst teams <laughs> in China, no doubt. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we talked about yesterday how that series felt like the safest 2-0 on the board with Rare Adam. Uh, but it was just the fact that Rare Adam really didn't score that well. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't need to put up a lot of a lot of kills. I mean, they did put up 19 in game two, and usually we're looking for that, like, 20 kill. In a sweep um, isn't quite where we wanted it to be, but they, they just didn't really need to, right. to really do as – you know, like, they didn't really need to go out and just be hyper-aggressive to, to roll over Rogue Warriors today, so – uh, yeah, we, we knew that was going to be kind of the spot for a, a sweep, like a safe spot. But, you know, the upside wasn't there with Rare Adam, unfortunately. Uh, you know, the upside was there with Afrika. But I just, like, wasn't expecting them to win. We forgot to bring up the bang revenge game narrative. We should have known, man. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other two series, like KT, Red Force, you know, Red Force with a sweep was a little bit surprising. But they didn't score for very well at all and then uh top esports the highest scoring team overall in slate with their 39 kills in their sweep so yeah i mean we could see that with them right like we, sure. we know that they're a team with high upside uh but to your point maybe you know we thought it would be a little more back and forth but they really they really stomped on jdg pretty good yeah what was nice about that red force kt matchup is that because they it was so close they were obviously like uh red force was the cheapest favorite and so uh, I was able to just play one TES Red Force, one TES KT, obviously. Yep. Uh, although I think actually both of them cashed thanks to to top. But like, yeah, there really wasn't much. I'm I'm starting to wonder if I'm underrating Afrika just in terms, less in terms of like winning, but more like when they win, they seem to score like well enough that maybe I'm underrating that part of, of their team. Yeah, that's definitely something to consider and they've kind of you know um shut me up a little bit because i i just i don't really like their roster i didn't like it coming into the the season just because i thought you know 
some of these guys are like on the back halves of their career and yeah. bang and fly and they're not that exciting but um you know they're back to three and three on the year and uh, a big sweep of t1 who we're gonna have to adjust some expectations for them going forward it looks like uh and yeah yeah to your point um Afrika, when they win they they scored pretty well so yeah it's something for us to to remember going forward i guess and we also saw t1 bring in uh cuz in the jungle so like just adding another frustrating point of uh, of having to use T1, although at least they were the first game. So we had yeah. somebody in our Discord say they kind of like accidentally woke up and realized that Cuz uh, was in and played him. And it's like, well, it's <laughs> at least you got the lineup yeah. right. Yeah, they're going to just be a pain all year, unfortunately. So I'm glad they're losing because it sucks trying to predict our lineup. <laughs> so they deserve to lose because... <laughs> Even when we've uh, gotten them right in terms of when they're going to win, we've gotten the wrong players a couple times. So screw them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, that's the most, the most, uh, you know, historic and uh, the best franchise in in all of League of Legends history. Really, is T1 and SKT before they rebranded, and it's kind of weird seeing them at two and four and just really not being a very good team so far this year. So. Um, yeah, we're going to have to adjust expectations going forward, I think. But at the same time, I would expect some form of a bounce back as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, let's jump into this uh, Monday two-game slate. Uh, obviously, no no LCK. So we have uh, Suning, huge favorite against LGD. And then RNG, a fairly big favorite against BLG. Um, we The last Suning slate, uh, you used the line that I think I'm going to use all season if they're struggling. Sooning can't be this bad. Uh, and then they went out and crushed. So um, now that they're their biggest favorite, we have to ask, are Sooning that good? Well, it's uh, tomorrow definitely feels like two chalk teams uh, is the way to go, right? Um, but the question is, like, so what we've seen in China so far is, like, uh, these, these top teams, the – the Edward Gamings, the RNGs, FPX, etc., um, seem to be just so much better than the than the teams in the middle and in the, on the bottom of the, the the bracket. So, you know, like RNG feel like the safest bet tomorrow because they're undefeated. Uh, even though BLG, we kind of like a little bit, right? We like yeah. the roster a little bit. So, but it just even even in that regard that we you know we like BLG in certain matchups. It just feels like RNG are one of the teams that are a cut above all the rest right now. Uh, so, you know, I, I love RNG seem pretty safe tomorrow. And then Sooning and LGD, you know, Sooning have, have been disappointing uh, throughout the year. Uh, but LGD are looking like one of the worst teams in the league. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's tough tomorrow to figure out like which team do we think is going to score the most. Uh, right. Because it seems like the the kind of chalk standard is going to be to play those two favorites, but it, it's going to be figuring out which way to go with your long stack uh, that I think makes the difference. Um, to me, it's to me it feels like, and we do this all the time, right? So Sooning, we like Sooning less than RNG, but we like LGD less than BLG. So yep. does that make us think that Sooning are going to score the most points tomorrow? Uh, Man, hard to say because, you know, this RNG, t- RNG team really does, you know, they're not afraid to push the pace and rack up kills. So, I mean, I can really see it going either way. It, it's hard to predict if I'm being honest. Um, it makes it for kind of a tricky slate, even though it's two, you know, chalk teams. It's funny. So I was looking at the, just the, ra- the you know, per game kill stats and all this stuff. And I think I just underestimated how bad LGD have been. Um, Because I was like, all right, let me see how they do in wins, how they do in losses, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, how do they do in wins? I'm like, 16 kills, not great. And I'm like, I look, I have to like look at my screen like three times. I'm like, one win? Yeah. One? Like, they have one. They've only won. No, so no series wins. No series wins, yeah. One map so far uh, this entire year. And they're looking rough. I mean, you know, we saw them make it to Worlds last year, but it's an entirely new roster except for Kramer uh, pretty much. And, and you know they brought in guys like uh, Uniboy, who who was on uh, who came from the LMS, made, was on a team that made it to Worlds last year. Uh, but what we saw when he faced some of the better teams at Worlds was they just really couldn't stand up to the competition, and that's basically what's happened to him so far in the LPL. Yeah. And you know we don't think of Angel necessarily in the same 
breath as like a, like a rookie or a doing B or or some of these other mid laners, but he's still a very good mid laner, um, and he's a guy that probably is going to take advantage of Uniboy tomorrow. And then the rest of LGD's team just has been pretty awful. Uh, whether it's whether you know Cult in the top lane hasn't been good, Q, this uh, QE guy in the jungle, uh, he hasn't been very good, and we saw him get benched last series for Flora. Uh, they're just bad, man. It's just a bad lineup right now, and they're really rough. And, you know, Kramer, it's like, yeah, we like Kramer, think he's a pretty good player, but he's not going to be able to, to, you know, do it by himself, especially, you know, when he's got a face. He's looking at Han Fang on the other side, so it's not like he's got a an easy matchup in his lane either, right? So just really don't feel good about LGD at all. Um, you know, if they did upset, it would probably have to be through Kramer. So if you want to yeah. get a little crazy and, and do a Kramer captain lineup and then go RNG with the second half, you know, on these two game slates, you got to get a little weird sometimes. Um, so not the not the worst shot, but I, I don't see them upsetting. I, re- I really don't. I I just think they're in a really bad spot as a team. And, and even though Suiting have been disappointing, this is a team that they should have no trouble taking down. Yeah, I feel like it's a situation where <clears throat> we know Suiting can disappoint. And if they disappoint, we're still going to be surprised. Right, but like, for sure. It's for just sure. because LGD have been so bad. Obviously, LGD is the best leverage point. Um, yep. Just like you said, the Kramer captain, just go for it. Um, but that's a classic first or last. And um, I think anybody who won with Thunder Talk recently probably is much more comfortable <laughs> thinking LGD yeah. can win. Um so I think the real question is, do you do like a double jungle captain with Sooning and RNG? Do you play BLG to win? So you do Sooning BLG or do you think LGD are just so bad that Sooning doesn't score and you game stack that second game? Um, I think Sooning are going to score personally. Yeah. Uh I mean, you can these two game slates like we talk about, right? It makes game stacks more viable just because the lack of overall options. Uh, so really, I don't really, you know, I can't say it's a bad idea necessarily to game stack that series, but I don't see it being, uh, I just don't see it being profitable enough to do so. Um, I would rather play like I'm. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna play double chalk. It looks like, um, and I, I just think Sooning like we know Sooning can disappoint, but we also know Sooning can put up some pretty yeah. big kill totals as well. Uh, so it gives me pause on the game stack. I just think uh, even even if that goes 2-1, I just think the team that loses isn't going to score enough points in the games that they lose to really make a game stack viable. Um, it's To me, it's basically just coming down to do I think Sooning outscores RNG, and I kind of do. Um, I mean, it's 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 tough because I can really see it both ways, and I know I'm not giving a lot of clarity here, but uh, you know, RNG have obviously scored very well this season too. But do I think BLG just just give up as many kills as LGD will? Kind of leaning no, but it, it wouldn't shock me either way. I, I, I think that's just like the biggest decision people are going to need to need to make tomorrow <clears throat> is where they're going to go with their long stack. Right. Um... For those, sorry to constantly make you talk about game stacks because I know no you problem. hate them so much. For those who game stack this RNG BLG, who do you think is the right captain? Um, like, is it just simple as Gala because double AD carry and then we'll just go from there? Yeah, I, I mean, it's sta- stock standard answer. But yeah, I mean, we're still seeing AD carries putting up the highest kill totals in these series. So. Um, and if we think RNG is going to 2-1, even in a game stack, I would, you know, make Gala the captain. Um, the other reason I would go double AD carry is because then you're getting aiming in as well if you did want to game stack it. And, you know, I think aiming is by far still, uh, you know, I think Meteor is really good in the jungle too, but uh, I think aiming is really the, the, the main carry option on this BLG team. Um, so if you were going to game stack, I would definitely go double AD carry and then go with whichever side you think is going to win you know, make that AD carry your captain. So if you think BLG is going to win, put aiming up there. If you think uh, RNG are going to win 2-1, then throw Gala up there and uh, and, and kind of go from there. Um, the one thing, though, you know, we me, talking about Meteor a little bit, if you think BLG are going to win, uh, I don't think he's like an awful captain pick because he has shown that he wants to play a lot of carry picks. He plays a lot of Graves and Olaf. So he's playing champions that, you know, can get a lot of kills um, that we've seen. You know, we just saw uh, – we saw Bo 
yesterday take over that that first game and end with 16 kills in one game on, on Olaf. So you know that's a that's a pick that Meteor likes to play. He's played a lot more Graves this season, uh, by far the most amount of games on Graves so far this year. And you know that's a pick that can can end the game with a lot of kills as well. So I don't dislike Meteor as a captain uh, captain thought either. Um, if you're trying to get a little different with your lineup, I I just personally don't think BL I don't think BLG can beat RNG. I, I think it's a little bit of too tall a mountain to climb for them. Uh, you know, I think Meteor is a really good really good jungler. So if he can get his laners ahead early and they can kind of take over and, and build from a good early game and and not let RNG back into it, then maybe they find a way to victory. But just think RNG have been so solid this year. It's it's hard to imagine them uh, them falling. Uh, maybe they drop a game. Wouldn't surprise me, but I, I think they come out as the winners of that series tomorrow. Uh, they've just been really good top to bottom all year. Yeah, looking at the uh, our cheat sheet here, it's kind of weird because um, aiming has the lowest kill participation on BLG. Yep. But he also has the highest kill share. Right. So, like, if you think a lot of the kills go through him, then obviously he makes more sense. But it, it's weird to see like like completely flipped. He's like first or last in those two categories. Not that they are always uh, correlative, but I don't know. Just weird to see. Yeah. Yeah. You'd like to think you'd like to see that kill participation up a bit more mm -hmm. um, near the top of the team, obviously, but you know, still, if he's picking up the majority of the kills, then that's where the upside is. Right. right? Uh, so, you know, I, I would still lean with him. I think he's a good player. You know, they, they are bringing in a new support tomorrow. So I haven't seen him play, you know, obviously. So we'll see, uh, We'll see how that affects them in the laning phase and stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it is it's just kind of hard to imagine BLG winning. I, can they take a game? Maybe, um, but it wouldn't shock me either if RNG just come out and roll. Yeah. Just they've been super solid this year and and looking like one of the obviously they're undefeated, so I'm not saying anything crazy, but obviously <laughs> they're looking like one of the best teams in the league so far. So. It's been fun, and you know these Chinese teams that are at the top are are taking care of business against the lower tier teams. So it's hard to imagine either either Suning or, or RNG really falling victim to an upset tomorrow. But crazier things have happened, as we know. That's yeah. right. We always have Fred and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Thunder Talk. And Thunder Talk. You're right. I can't. Uh, for how much we've just crapped on them, we we shouldn't yeah. uh, shouldn't leave them out. Eating a little crow. Yeah. All right, Chalk City on Monday, as always, with the two-game slate. Oh, well. Yep. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed the video, if you could just please hit the like button below. Uh, feel free to subscribe for all the Rotowire videos covering, obviously, League of Legends, but also NBA, NHL. Baseball ones are coming up now, uh, football winding down, but um, we've got tons of content there. Uh, obviously, lots at rotowire.com, uh, which is where all of the tools and the cheat sheets that we've been showing throughout the videos uh, are. If you are not a Rotowire uh, subscriber and would like to join, just go to rotowire.com slash pod, P-O-D. It gets you 10 free days to the site. Um, also, if you're just ready to subscribe, rotowire.com slash subscribe. I believe the League of Legends package goes on the all sports, but it's, uh, I think, $5.99 a month, which uh, is pretty affordable for the uh, DFS world. So check that out. Ethan, thank you for that, and good luck on Monday. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Same to you.